Hey guys, be sure to like and subscribe. Today I want to talk about emergency money. How to get emergency money when, you, when you're having a problem or you lost your ATM card or what have you. Here's the best way to go about it. Make sure you, you have the Western Union app or a similar app open up on your phone. Okay, have it on your phone, have it available so that when you lose your credit, your ATM card or what have you, you can go in there and you can send yourself money as long as you have an ID. That's why I tell people always have extra IDs hidden around the house or whatever, okay? Just, just be aware of that, that's important. The other thing, that's one way of sending yourself money. You can also send money to your girlfriend, to her account. And I usually send my budget each, each month to my girlfriend. So that way there, she takes care of that. She's been doing that for years. So she takes care of all the household budget stuff. And that way there, if I need to, I can send her extra money and she can just pull it out and give it to me. That's another way. Also, there's credit card cash advances for emergencies. And at some time or another, we're all gonna run into some sort of cash emergency over here. It just, it just happens. You know, either your ATM card doesn't work for one reason or another. And when you come over to the Philippines, here's what happens. When you go to your bank and you tell them you're coming over to the Philippines to visit, don't ever tell them that you're coming over here to live permanently because otherwise they might cancel your, your, account, your bank account eventually, okay? What you wanna do is you wanna just tell them that you're going on a long trip and you're gonna be away for a while and you, you're gonna be in the Philippines. They probably, some banks will make you sign a paper, a waiver saying that, you know, because they, they say this is like scam city. So they worry about that you're gonna get scammed or robbed or something like that or somebody's gonna, you know, scan your card or something and use the numbers. So you have to sign a waiver with them sometimes which is kind of scary. So you don't want to ha always have a lot of money sitting in your, your US bank, okay? I have four, four, um, four accounts attached to that account. And I keep most of my money in those other accounts because if somebody uses my ATM card, they, they, they can't get into those other accounts. I can switch it over as needed, then I take it out. And that kind of saves me and, and it saves me a lot of grief and worry. Also, there's another thing you can do, and this is the big one that you want to really, really think about. And this works with credit cards also. I've mentioned this in the past. Most banks, if you have an ATM card, have an on-off switch. And you can go into your account and turn it off and on. Before you leave the house to go to, let's say, the mall or a restaurant or something that you're going to use your credit card, switch your card on and switch it off as soon as you come home. Or use your data to switch it on and off. And sometimes you might have problems if you're always using your banking app from home. Sometimes it doesn't work as well with the data. Just be aware of that. So you might have a problem. So you might have to call the bank, which they might be closed because it's, you know, it's, 12, it's, um, it's a t big time difference, 12 hours time difference between here and there or what have you. So just, just keep that in mind. But anyway, there's a switch and this goes with your credit card apps. You can turn off your credit card, turn on your credit card. So it's, it's kind of a nice thing to have because when you shut that off, you don't have to worry about anybody ever using that credit card number. If somebody you know, scanned your number or took a picture of your credit card while they were ringing up something in the Philippines or something, you don't have to worry about that. It doesn't happen often. I've never had a problem with that, but I'm, I'm kind of like tight on, on security for all my stuff, and you guys should be too, it, by all means. You know, a lot of people are kind of loosey-goosey with their, with their ATM cards. Um, I had a friend of mine, Mike, and man, he had his girlfriend girlfriends, plural, <laughs> um, using his PIN numbers and stuff. And by, he was usually broke by the second week of the month, you know, in most cases. And, he, he, you know, he had to use his credit cards or what have you and then pay it off at the beginning of the month. But, I mean, don't be like that, you know. Just don't, don't, don't be like that. It, it, it'll save you a lot of grief to not give out your PIN number to anybody. Don't give it out to anybody. You know, if you're married or something, obviously I would give it to your wife because if you get sick, there's been people over here that have had strokes and heart attacks and their, their wives or girlfriends have not been able to take care of them even though they had plenty of money because guess what? They thought that when they got sick, they would be able to tell their girlfriend that, hey, here's the pin number, here's my card, go get some money. Well, they couldn't talk and they were, they were on a ventilator or what have you or, you know, they had heart stuff on them, they were sick, they weren't doing well, their brain wasn't 
you know, it's happened. It's happened over here because several people have told me they've seen people um, pass away from that actually because the hospitals wouldn't work on them until they had some sort of um, down payment, let's say. So you have to be careful. You know, and I tell people over here, logistically, it's a mess, man, when you have an emergency over here because you have to have everything planned out and you need to know what to do and how to do it. Now, my girlfriend, I keep money in an account with her too for emergency. I keep about $4,000 in there, okay? I'm gonna move that up to about 5,000 sooner or later. You know, so that way there, she has money. God forbid I die, she can go in there and she, we're working that up to like about 10,000. You know, she can just, she has enough money to bury me. We don't have to worry, it's not a big concern. You know, so that's, that's a good thing. Plus she ends up getting a life insurance policy too, which I know would take some time and that's why I put some cash in there to cover her for the interim, at least for that. And plus she has other stuff coming in. So she doesn't have to worry about anything. She's, she's good. But guys, make sure you take care of that stuff. Insurance policies for you to bury you, money aside to bury you, you know, to take care of your girlfriend or your wife afterwards. I mean, some guys, they figure it's just a girlfriend, I'm, I'm not gonna leave her anything. At least leave her enough money to bury you and have like six months on her feet. So she's, you know, she doesn't get ticked off at you and says, I'm not gonna bury this guy, I'm just gonna take the money. Cause that's what might happen. Because when she sees that you left her in a hard spot, some of these girls get, might get mad. And I'm just saying the truth. So, you know, plan ahead. Take care of these women, be good to them. They take care of you, they look after you, and that's what we come over here for. Take care of them on the way out a little bit too. Leave them a little something behind. But remember, also, I'm gonna, there's another little um, thing I wanted to talk about was when banks, when you go to check in on your bank account, bank account online sometimes, and I do this with my Mac sometimes, I'll go onto my account and it'll say, um, we want to verify who this is. Uh, can we send you a text and type in this number or call and type in this no number, whatever. So they send me this thing and they, well, they give me like a choice between text or phone call. Now the phone call works on my Magic Jack, okay? I have text on my Magic Jack, but for some reason it won't work because these banks have some sort of um, security system knowing that it's an internet phone number or whatever. But if they call, they can't tell. So they call you in most cases. So the Magic Jack has helped me like as far as banking goes. So I'm allowed to do my banking each month. Otherwise I'd be in trouble. You know, I'd have a lot, a lot of issues if I didn't have any way to pay people or what have you. That'd be a big problem for me. So anyway, make sure you have like some sort of Magic Jack backup. That's another key to have. You want to have all this stuff all in place. Have it all in place. You, there's one thing that you don't need in the Philippines is problems. And guys, remember, you, you can send money from your bank to, through Western Union to yourself. You can send money to your girlfriend through Western Union or some other app if you so decide to your, to your girlfriend. You can get cash advances from your credit cards. Okay, make sure you have an ID if you're gonna go into a bank or you know the PIN number so you can go up and you can, you can use it at an ATM or whatever. Make sure you know this stuff in your head. Have it in your wallet. I have a little thing on my keychain, okay? And it has a lot of my, my PIN codes and all my passwords and stuff and it's on this little tiny piece of paper and it's all hidden away. And it, it, I carry it with me because it's, it's like a pill box. It's a good thing to have. You know, because I can have all in there, I don't forget things. And whenever I change things, I go on there and I erase it and I put the new number in there and stuff. It's just kind of helpful because as we get older, we forget those numbers for certain accounts or whatever. And then some accounts make you change it every six months, so it's hard to keep track of that. It really is hard to keep track of that. But anyway, guys, that's about it. I just want to make sure that everybody's safe when it comes to money. Have some extra money or extra cash sitting around your house too. At least 500 or 1,000. I would recommend, possibly more, depending on, on how you feel about that. If you're wealthier, you might want to have as much as 5,000 around the house, although I don't recommend having that much around the house unless you have it hidden really well. But, you know, and that's good, good to let your girlfriend know that you have some cash around the house too, if, you, if she's that trustworthy, or your wife or what have you. But don't tell everybody about it. Just tell 
one person whom you really trust, whether it be your girlfriend or your buddy. But be careful who you trust, guys. Keep that in mind. God bless, guys. Take care.